Hi, I'm Mrs. Amodimo and this is Penny. Welcome to our neighborhood nature walk. This is episode eight. Uh, we are gonna be going on a walk today. We're gonna walk over to my sister-in-law. She's been building something really interesting in her yard and we're gonna take a look and we'll see what we see on our way. Remember, if you're gonna go on your own neighborhood nature walk, make sure you stay on the sidewalk unless you have your neighbor's permission to go in their yard. All right, Penny, let's get started. All right, my friends, we've got some pretty things growing behind me. This is a hydrangea. They come in lots of different colors. As we walk, let's see if we can find another one that's another color. And this is called butterfly plant. And as its name suggests, my friends, it's one of the ones that butterflies love. And I'm hoping in another week or two, the butterflies are gonna show up and we'll have a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Let's keep going. All right, my friends, here we have another type of hydrangea. You can see these flowers are a couple different colors, but they've got that pretty white edge around the flowers. When you have a whole bunch of little flowers grouped together, my friends, they call them florets. So this whole big thing is called a floret, or sometimes you'll hear it called a hydrangea head. My sister-in-law had this made in her backyard. It's called a catio. It's basically a playground for her cats. Her cats are very friendly and they come when my sister-in-law shakes the treat box and calls them. What do you notice when you look at her cats? That's right, they are weird looking. They don't have any fur. These cats are called Sphinx cats and they're supposed to not have fur. They were bred this way. In here, they don't have any of the long hair that we think of cats as having. They do have short, tiny little hair that they call downy hair on their bodies. They actually feel really nice to pet. Sphinx cats are very curious and playful and need a lot of things to keep them busy or they will tear things up. Because Sphinx cats are hairless, they lose a lot of body heat. This makes them great cuddlers as they like to cuddle with people to stay warm. This white pink colored cat is named Luke Skywhisker. If he had fur, he would probably be white and cream. This black cat's name is Darth Vex, and if he had fur, he would probably be black. These types of cats were originally called Canadian hairless. They got started in Toronto, Canada in 1966 when a litter of kittens was born without hair. Using selective breeding, the breeder was able to get more and more offspring that didn't have hair. In 2002, Cant Fanciers Association accepted the Sphinx for competitions and championships, and the breed has gained popularity since then. Sphinx cats are excellent for people who want to have cats as pets but are allergic. All right, 
my friends, here's another hydrangea. Hydrangea are what they call a perennial shrub. That means they come back year after year. That's what perennial means. And one of the interesting things about hydrangeas is the type of soil you have determines the color of the flowers. If you have very acidic soil, you get very, very bright pink flowers. And if you have base soil, you get big, beautiful blue flowers. This is a different type of hydrangea, my friends. And here's another kind of hydrangea, my friends. And right next to it is another one. And there's one more. Now, some hydrangeas are white and they stay that color, my friends. Like these are actually bred to be white and they stay white. There are a few others that are just the color they are and they don't change with the soil, like these beautiful whites. Here is another kind of hydrangea. This one's often called lace edge. Here's one more hydrangea, my friends. I hadn't realized how many different types of hydrangea were in my neighborhood. my friends we have found some interesting and beautiful things this is a hosta with the hosta flowers and then back here my friends these are called stargazer lilies and they're wonderful they smell fantastic and that tall poofy thing in the back is called tall phlox usually phlox is low and short but this one's called tall phlox and again I'm hoping the butterflies will come for it in a week or two Let's keep going, Penny. All right, my friends, we've found some more lilies and these are a lot taller. They are related to the stargazer lily. This type is just called a lily tree and they get really tall. Here are some more lilies, my friends. You can see these are a beautiful, bright orange color. I've seen these a lot of different places, my friends. These are called tiger lilies. Can you guess why they're called tiger lilies? You got it, it's that beautiful orange color with a little bit of stripes. We looked at this plant quite a while ago, my friends. This is Dusty Miller. It's got that beautiful white, white leaf and they're slightly fuzzy. And now they are blooming. And again, like the hydrangea, my friends, you would consider this florets. It's got a whole bunch of little bitty flowers grouped together and they call them florets. They kind of look like little bitty sunflowers. They're really pretty. But what I love about them are these white sort of fuzzy leaves.
Let's keep going. All right, my friends, this is lavender. It smells amazing. All right, my friends, what do you see? What is that insect that is flying on the lavender? That's right, it's a honeybee. What's it doing? Well, the honeybee is gathering nectar so it can take it back to the hive to make honey. What's it doing for the plant? That's right, that pollen gets rubbed off on the bee and it gets transferred from the stamen to the pistil so that the flower can make seeds. Let's review insects real quick, my friends. What do you remember? That's right, insects have three body segments, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. How many legs does an insect have? That's right, they have six legs. Anything else you remember? Insects may or may not have wings. Insects have eyes that are called compound eyes. That means they can see lots of different things all at the same time. It's fascinating. This kind of butterfly is called a cabbage white butterfly. Sometimes they just call it a cabbage butterfly. It's a small butterfly that originally came from Europe. It came to North America in the 1860s and it's one of the most common white butterfly species in North America. The black spots and the little bit of black near the edge of the wings is one of the features that makes it easy to identify this type of butterfly compared to other white butterflies we see. All right, my friends, we've got a couple more pretty things to look at. These are called brown-eyed Susans and they're called brown-eyed Susan because the inside is brown. And then this is another type of butterfly plant. We saw the orange one in the, before. All right, my friends, if you're gonna go on your own neighborhood nature walk, make sure you stay on the sidewalk. I hope you had a good time. I'm gonna get this little girl a bowl of water. Bye. Mm -hmm.